I just, I find so many great things in the book of Romans. I, I heard a minister say one time, he said that, uh, he said, if I had to make a choice that I could just have one book in the Bible and I wouldn't be allowed to read any other book in the Bible, but I had to pick one book and I could have whatever book that I wanted, he said, I would pick the book of Romans. And uh, I don't know if I would pick that or Corinthians, uh, but I... I, li I love the book of Romans, and this is a great book. So let us stand this morning as I read our text. And uh, it's uh, up there, verses, uh, chapter 14, verses 5 through 8. The Bible says, One man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord, and he that regardeth not the day to the Lord, he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not, and giveth God thanks. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. Father, we thank you this morning for your word. We thank you for each one that's here in the house of God. And I just pray this message will be a blessing. I pray that it will edify and encourage each and every one of us. And most of all, that it will help us in our walk with you. We'll just have your way in the remainder of the service this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated if you wish. So much could be said about this this morning, and I just pray that this message will be a blessing uh, to each and every one of us, and that, uh, uh, that it will help us to understand things. I, uh, I find that in the Christian community as a whole, we'll find a lot of different ideas and uh, a lot of things that we disagree on uh, and so forth and we all have traditions and ideas and different things and I think Paul uses these two things of eating of food and and uh, the keeping of holy days and that sort of thing and so this morning I, I want to minister on those things this morning uh, we find, if we look at the history behind the book of Romans, uh, we find that there was a drought in Jerusalem, and that was the center of Christianity uh, at this particular time, and in, this was in the first century, and we find that there was a drought there, so there was a famine, and the Bible said that the saints were scattered everywhere the saints were scattered and went everywhere preaching the word. And when they got to Rome, here they was preaching the word and a lot of people was coming to the Lord. A lot of people was getting saved. And these saints, they wasn't ministers, they wasn't preachers or teachers of, of the word or things like that. And so they sent back to Jerusalem and asked the leadership in Jerusalem to send help, to send some ministers to help them to disciple these folks that lived in Rome, that had accepted the Lord. And it's so important, important that once you commit your life to Christ, uh, that you are discipled, that you learn about the Lord. I, I was thinking about a man, his, uh, his last name is Barker, Brother Barker, and he went down into Bolivia, and there he spent several years preaching and uh, telling people about the Lord. And there was a, a lot of people got saved, and several hundred, I understand. And he got down there and he preached that. And after being there for several years, he decided to come back to the United States. And so he did for a period of time. And then he went back to Bolivia, and when he got back to Bolivia, he couldn't find hardly any of these Christians that had accepted the Lord. And he said, what happened? And he, he met some of the people, and they wasn't going to church or doing anything as far as their relationship with Christ. 
and he said he came to the conclusion that our responsibility goes a lot further than just uh, getting people to accept the Lord in their life. Uh, and so he put together a program, and I've got a copy of that program uh, that uh, he used, went back and used there in Bolivia to disciple those people and to get them established in the Lord. And it's very important that we get established in the Lord. And we find here in Rome that these, here these people, uh, they were Romans and, uh, and citizens of the Roman Empire, uh, and uh, most of them I assume. And so here the, uh, so Paul heard about this whole situation, and so he sat down and he wrote a letter to them. And it's what we call the book of Romans in the Bible. That's the letter that Paul wrote to these people and told them of so many things about the Lord. And the chapter 14 uh, is one, and we find that people, when they accepted the Lord back in that period, back in that, uh, that time, we find that uh, there was uh, a lot of the people that was uh, trying to practice a lot of things in Judaism, and there was other people that said, oh no, we don't need to, uh, to do this and do that, and circumcision was a, big, uh, uh, was a big thing, and keeping the Mosaic law was a big thing for some people, and also there was controversy there. And so here we find that the Apostle Paul wrote this to him, our text this morning, and he said to them, he said, one man esteemeth uh, one day above another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. And so here I find that what Paul is saying here in this whole thing, uh, I think Paul was saying, you know, if some people wants to have holy days and, and have, a, uh, you know, uh, esteem the Sabbath as a, very important day to keep and, and those things, uh, it's okay, let him, let him keep them that day. And if there's others of you that don't think that that's necessary under grace, then, uh, and you don't want to keep those days, then don't keep those days. Uh, and Paul was saying to these people, well, you can do these things, but don't make a controversy in the church and cause division and cause problems with one another. But just every man practice what do is the convictions of your heart, uh, and and uh, uh, and just worship the Lord and be a good solid Christian. Now, he said in verse seven, he said, and none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live thereforth or die, we are the Lord. So. Uh, whether you have different things you practice in your church service and somebody else has other things and and there is churches today that's known as Sabbath keepers uh, so uh, our attitude about this should be if they want to have church on Saturday that's okay let them have church on Saturday there's nothing wrong with that if we decided we wanted to have church on Tuesday then it would be okay for us to have church on Tuesday so it is, there's, uh, uh, there's really uh, no day that we need to keep today. We are not under the Mosaic law. We are uh, a people that uh, the law was changed from law to grace at the cross. And so we are not under that Mosaic law anymore. Let us continue here. I want to skip down to verse 13, still in the 14th chapter of uh, the book of Romans uh, and the Bible says here let us not therefore judge one another anymore but judge this rather that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way so we uh, we read this verse of scripture and uh, we find that uh, and maybe I should read some more uh, here in the, in the scripture before I comment on this, but I'll read that a, a little bit. Uh, but here, which we, uh, a stumbling block, 
refined people, that there are some people that's not very strong in the Lord. They're very easily persuaded about things. They are uh, they are affected by things. Uh, and we don't want to cause harm to come to other Christians. And that's what Paul is saying here. So don't make an issue out of these things. And, and uh, let's all enjoy the Lord. And let's, uh, uh, let's do as the Lord, uh, unto the Lord, the things that we do and what we practice. And... I've, uh, I've been asked about our doctrine here in this church, and uh, by the way, I believe doctrine is very important, and I believe it is, it's important to be correct in things, but I have found in my life, and I've been serving the Lord a long time, and I, uh, in that period of time that I've been serving the Lord, I find that I've had to make some changes in my life, and and in what I believe about serving God. And so uh, I find that uh, uh, when I make these changes, I have to look back and I try to evaluate these things and I look and, and I have to ask myself how important are they and so forth. And so uh, as, I, as, as I progress, uh, and I call it progress, in the Lord and I move on and I learn things more and more about the Lord, then I have to look back and I have to ask myself, was I saved back there when I was in a false doctrine? Have you ever thought about that? When I was back there, when I believed different than what I do now, was I saved back there? And the answer to that is yes, I was just as saved back there as I am now. And if there's people uh, in our congregation and people that we meet in other churches and so forth that uh, believe different than we do and so forth uh, we have to ask our question ourselves sometimes we ask ourselves are those people really saved are they really Christians are they going to go to heaven or are they uh, de deceived and and not going to make it spend eternity in the lake of fire well you know what if they have the love of God in their heart and they've accepted Jesus in their life then they're saved, and uh, and we're all <coughs> striving for uh, for the, the best that we can do in the Lord and our understanding. And I believe that we ought to continue to study. The Bible says in in uh, what is it, Timothy two two fifteen, study to show thyselves unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And so uh, we need to study. We need to uh, study not necessarily for a perfect understanding about what's written in the Bible, but we need to study and to show ourselves approved unto God, not by education or so forth, but by the condition of our heart. And that's what we need to study. Uh, uh, unto the Lord that we are approved of him so in Romans 13 or chapter 14 verse 13 let us not therefore judge one another anymore but judge us rather that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way so let's don't harm somebody other uh, somebody else with our with our ideas our uh, uh, rituals or whatever we should happen to have and those things and let's just uh, uh, let's just don't uh, argue about things and and uh, and cause our uh, our brother to have a bad spirit or get a bad spirit on ourselves about things verse 14 I know and am persuaded by the Lord that there is nothing unclean of itself but he that esteemeth anything to be unclean to him it is unclean. Okay, I uh, uh, I could use several things as an example uh, about uh, uh, to, you know to bring this out and to understand this. But he said, "I'm persuaded that there is nothing of itself that is unclean." Okay, now that's a a, a statement that we could we could understand that in a very broad sense and say. Oh wow, we can just do anything and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, that's not what Paul had in mind here because there is some guidelines 
for Christianity that we have to live by and so forth. And we find that there are different Christians that draws the lines in different places as to what we can and can't do in Christianity. Uh, we find that uh, uh, one thing, one place we can look, we can look at the Ten Commandments that there is in the Bible and we can get some pretty clear understanding about what is right and what is wrong and what God requires for us. Uh, when, you, when you do that, I think you need to look to the New Testament and you need to look at, because every one of those Ten Commandments is mentioned in the New Testament but has a different wording than they do in the Old Testament. And in the New Testament, it gives a, uh, a different understanding at all. I, uh, uh, let's see if I can think of a, of a good, under, uh, good uh, uh, example. Uh, well, that's one I was thinking of. Uh, okay, I'll use that. Uh, uh, one of the commandments is, Thou shalt not commit adultery. And so in the Old Testament, you had, to, uh, you had to do the very act of adultery in order to be guilty. But, in, but Jesus said, uh, if a man looks on, unto a woman to lust after her, in his heart he has committed adultery. And it is about the heart. And so when we, uh, when we think about that, uh, we think that the... The commandment not to commit adultery, it has, it has changed the meaning somewhat. And actually, in the New Testament, there's more required of us than there was in the Old Testament. And so, uh, we need to apply the New Testament teaching. And it's about if the, if the heart is pure. If we have a pure heart, and if our mind is thinking correctly, and uh, we're trying to do right, and so forth, then we fulfill all of the Ten Commandments. And, and uh, I heard a man say one time that if we keep the, the Tenth Commandment, thou shalt not covet, uh, then we'll fulfill the rest of the, uh, the commandments. Well, that that's, that's, would be hard to argue with, wouldn't it? So uh, uh, let's, let's go on a little bit uh, further here. Verse 15, But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, now walkest thou not charitably. Destroy not him with thy meat whom Christ died. Uh, I think we could, we could look at it like this. I know a group, a Christian uh, denomination, that they, uh, they keep part of the Mosaic Law. And one thing that they, that they endeavor to do is to keep the dietary law. You can eat this, you can eat that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, in the New Testament, it says that there is nothing unclean of itself, uh, that uh, uh, and, and everything is acceptable, and we can eat anything that there is as long as we do it with uh, prayer and thanksgiving. If we thank God for our food, we can eat pork. They couldn't eat pork in the Old Testament. Uh, we can eat uh, catfish, which was forbidden in the Old Testament. Uh, I'm glad we can eat that now. I like catfish. Uh, and so there's a lot of things that you couldn't eat back under the law in the Old Testament, but you can eat now and so forth. So a lot of things has changed. And, uh, but there is groups, and I know that uh, I had some in-laws for a long time that uh, uh, they was really into this. They would not eat anything that was what the Old Testament called unclean. And they wouldn't eat any kind of pork or any fish that didn't have fins and scales and, and uh, scales uh, and so forth. And so uh, here the situation was that these people really felt strongly about this. Now, if I invited them over to my house to eat, and I eat pork chops and, and so forth, and so we prepared pork chops for them to eat, that would be offensive to them. And you know what? I shouldn't do that. I should not knowingly do that. A lot of times we don't know what people's convictions are 
uh, and people that uh, don't eat pork, they would understand that. That, uh, But if they knew, that would be an insult to them if I tried to serve them that when they come to my house for dinner. Uh, and so uh, we don't want to offend anybody with what uh, the things that we do. Uh, we could look at the subject of alcohol. Uh, there's no place in the Bible that tells us that we can't have uh, alcohol. In fact, Jesus drank wine and, and uh, when we look at that, but it is a common teaching in a lot of Christian circles that it's wrong to consume alcohol. And so I know that if I was seen uh, having uh, a beer or, uh, or drinking uh, a glass of wine, I know that it could hurt my ministry. And so I abstain from that. I don't, uh, I don't uh, uh, take any kind of alcohol. I have a friend that he attends our church here on Wednesday night, and he drinks a beer once in a while. And I know of other Christians that do. I know a minister that has a beer once in a while and, and uh, uh, different things like that. But you know what? If, uh, if I did that in the presence of some Christians, it would be offensive. And uh, if uh, especially if it was somebody that was weak in the faith, it could offend them. So I abstain from that. And uh, so we, uh, uh, we look at these kind of things. And that's what this, uh, this passage of Scripture is all about. Uh, let's, let's continue here. Verse uh, 16. Let not your good be evil spoken of, for the kingdom of God is not made in drink but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. And you know what? This morning as we look at that verse of Scripture, the, and I just, uh, I, I think there's a broader meaning to this than what uh, uh, many people has, uh, uh, has shared with me. Because I think this is a, is a tremendous verse of Scripture here. Uh, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. So when we serve God, it's not about our diet. It's not about how we dress. It's not about where we go and things we do. As long as we're not harming people and, and not, uh, you know, uh, interfering with our relationship with God in the things that we do, then there's nothing that is unclean of itself, the Bible says. And so uh, I'm not preaching this morning that it's okay to just do everything and anything, to go out and smoke pot and get high and, and uh, you know, use heroin and all that kind. No, I'm not saying that at all because I believe that Christians should live a good, clean life. Uh, and I believe that if we really believe God and, and, uh, and really want to serve Him, that we won't have a desire to do those things. And so we can't make a religion out of those kind of things this morning. What, uh, uh, but what the kingdom of God is, is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. It's not uh, uh, meat and drink and those kind of things. And, and the days that you keep and when you go to church and when you don't go to church and, and all of these kind of things. I know of, a, of, a, of people that say if, if you don't go to church on Saturday, then you, you just might not make it because God said keep the Sabbath. Well, they need to study the Bible and see what it says about the Sabbath because there's nothing in the Bible that tells us to go to church on the Sabbath. Even before the cross, there wasn't. They did not. It was not a day of worship, a day of congregational gathering. It was a day of rest is what keeping the Sabbath was. And so when you, the, the people that teach that they need to search the scriptures and see what they're talking about okay uh, verse 18 says for he that in these things service Christ uh, is acceptable to God and approved of men acceptable to God and, and, uh, and approved of God approved of men so it's just a uh, uh, it should be the desires of each and every one of us 
to please God in our life. That's what it's really about, and to worship God, to enhance our relationship with Him. And it's important for us as Christians to do whatever it takes to be a better Christian and do the kind of things that we want to do. We, and to do that, there's uh, three things that I like to tell people that they should do. They should read their Bible on a regular basis and uh, preferably every day. Uh, we should have a regular prayer life where we meet and talk with the Lord and, and meet with Him and then we need to have fellowship. And that means to be with God's people. Come to church and go to other events where Christians are, are gathering together to honor God and to worship Him. Verse uh, 19 says, Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace, and things wherewith one may edify another. For me destroy not the work of God. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for that man who eateth with offense. Even though things are pure, although it's okay to have ham or those things, why uh, and, and eat your ham, enjoy it, but don't do that if it's offensive to somebody else, to some other Christian especially. Okay, it is good neither to, to eat flesh or to drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth or is offended or is made weak. And that's why that we abstain from certain things uh, and, uh, and try to uh, live our lives so that uh, it's uh, helpful to those round about us. Hast thou faith? Have it to thyself before God. Happy, and I really like this next statement here. Happy is he that contemneth not himself in that thing which he alloweth. Now, if you get, find yourself in a situation where maybe you're invited to, to participate in something and you wonder if you should go or not, would that be offensive? Is, is that something that it's okay for Christians to do? And, and maybe you have some doubts about uh, about this event or whatever it is, uh, then if you have some real doubts about it and if you wonder if God would be displeased if you did it and so forth, you know what? You just shouldn't do it. You really shouldn't and you should abstain from those sort of things. So, and, uh, so don't do anything that would uh, bring guilt or, or condemnation upon yourself. Uh, verse 23 says, And he that doubteth is damned if he eats, because he eateth not of faith, for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So if you have doubts about something and, and you have maybe think you shouldn't do it, then you shouldn't do it. If you see somebody else doing it, some other Christians doing it, well then don't... Uh, don't be uh, negative towards him about those things, but uh, but enjoy his fellowship and everything. I want to I want to close my message this morning with something that uh, if from the Old Testament that I just want to share with you about the way we live and offending others and causing others to to stumble and causing uh, uh, problems between people. Uh, that we do and so forth and I want to uh, uh, I, I want to kind of relate the story about David when he fell into sin with Bathsheba uh, David was uh, one evening a cool evening I can just picture this in my mind uh, he was there in Jerusalem and he went up to the top of his house and uh, this was a common practice I understand back in those days and he went up there to enjoy the cool evening and he looked across to another house over there and guess what he saw? There was a beautiful lady up there that was taking a bath. Now, I, when, you, when you consider this whole thing, I think the first thing we have to consider is that lady had no business up there 
in view of the neighbors taking a bath. But that's what she was doing. And she was taking a bath up there, and King David saw her, and he began to have lust in his heart. And, and so he asked one of his servants to uh, find out who she was and, and invited her over to his house, and they had an affair. And she became pregnant, and, and uh, I come to find out her husband was away at war. His name was Uriah, and he was away at war, and so uh, David tried to make it look like uh, this child she was going to have was bothered by her husband, so he had Uriah come home and, and uh, spend some time with his wife, and he said, no, I can't do that. He said, there's men over there fighting, and, and uh, they're not, uh, uh, they can't enjoy these pleasures and so forth, so I'm not either, and he few, refused to go to his house. Well, David put him, had him put in a place in the war where it was very dangerous, and Uriah was killed. And so, in the eyes of the Lord, David killed Uriah uh, for his wife. And so, uh, that's, that's a story that uh, uh, we want to look at. We find that David was punished by the Lord for this and so forth. And so, we could, uh, we could just stop right there and say, well, God punished David. That's the end of the whole situation. But I want to share something with you this morning. That was not the end of the situation. And many times if we do something like that and we offend somebody and do something we shouldn't do, uh, it's not the end of the story. And it is and it is things that could go on in your life for a long time. So let's look in the book of 2 Samuel in the Old Testament, verse 50, chapter 15 and verse uh, 31. And the Bible says, And one told David, saying, I'm going to try to pronounce this. Ethopophil. Uh, well, I'm going to leave it at that. Is among the conspirators with Absalom. And David said, O oh Lord, I pray thee, turn the counsel of Ethopophil, whatever that name is, into foolishness. Now, what's going on here? We find that some time went by, and we find that David's son, Absalom, tried to overthrow the kingdom and, and take the kingdom away from his father. And we find that this man, that I can't pronounce his name, he, uh, he was a man that had been loyal to David and a, and a counselor to David and, and helping him and so forth. And this man turned away from David and began to help Absalom and counsel with him and actually act kind of like a spy and to help him to overthrow his father David uh, in the kingdom. Uh, this man, why would this man that I can't pronounce, why would this man turn against David and begin to do this? Well, if you search scripture out, I'll tell you what you can find if you look at that, some genealogy in the scripture, you'll find that this man uh, that we're talking about here, he was the grandfather of Bathsheba. Okay? Now, so what happened? What David did with Bathsheba upset her grandfather in such a, 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 a major way that he turned against David. So he had bad feelings towards David. He was angry with David, and he turned against David because of what David did with Bathsheba. So I wanted to share that with you this morning because there's things that we do uh, 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 in, in our lives. The Bible said in our text I read, no man liveth to himself and no man dieth to himself. The things you do in your life affects the lives of other people. And there's things that other people do that's going to affect your life. And that's kind of the way it is in this world. And so we need to be careful not to offend anybody. We need to, uh, this was an extreme situation I shared with you about David. Uh, and so this morning as we look at that, that was a terrible thing that he did. But God forgave him. Uh, and even though God forgave him, there was still 
some things that followed that affected David's life and, and things in, in the kingdom of Israel. And that can also be the same thing when it comes to some of our doctrines and our practices and things that's, that's dear to us and things that we feel are very important. Sometimes we can offend other people and uh, many times without even knowing it. So uh, this morning we need to be careful about uh, how we act, how we conduct ourselves, uh, the things we say to people. Uh, you know, if we want to be Sabbath keepers, okay, let's be Sabbath keepers. If you run across Sabbath keepers, then uh, don't uh, uh, be uh, uh, angry at them and, uh, and tell them they're in false doctrines and that kind of things. You just enjoy their fellowship because it's between them and the Lord. Same way with eating meat and our relatives that I had that... Uh, uh, they, they tried to keep the dietary law uh, and uh, uh, we find that uh, they, most of them worked very hard at doing that and, and I would consider them successful in doing that. And you know what? I never argued with them about it or tried to convince them they was wrong. There was times the subject came up on that and, and go to church on Saturday and we would discuss it and, and we had some, some very interesting discussions, uh, but I never did, uh, I tried not to ever offend them or say things that would destroy the fellowship that I had with them. And you know what? Uh, and, and I don't say this to be bragging or anything like that, but in all the years that I've known them, I've had a good relationship with all of them. It's just been really good. and. And uh, they kind of accept the fact that I'm not going to change my mind on those things. And I know they're not. And so why have uh, arguments and have disagreements and so forth? Let's just uh, leave that between them and the Lord. And that's what we should do when we run across situations like that. So uh, this morning, uh, let us do all we can for the kingdom of God. Uh, and to be a blessing one to another. Uh, it's important that we, that we spend our time in worshiping God and, and enhancing our relationship with God and the relationship that other people has with God. We need to really do everything we can to encourage people and, and help them with their walk. We find that uh, Christians go through enough uh, persecution and things when the enemy attacks them and and, uh, and tries to interfere with their walk and so forth. And so let's help one another and let's be a blessing to one another in spite of the differences that we may have. And uh, we have a lot of different church denominations with a lot of different convictions about what's right and wrong, uh, but we can still have fellowship uh, and we can enjoy one another and we can benefit from one, uh, uh, from one another and if we have a proper attitude and act in a proper way. So with that, this morning, let us stand.